Now, in this part of the video, we will talk about the lung compliance and lung recoil or elastins. Two important terms for the exam. In order to explain what compliance and elastins are, I will give you interesting examples in vitro. Suppose I expose three lungs out of the chest cavity. First, you have to know that if you get the lung outside of the chest cavity, it collapses. So here are three collapsed lungs outside of the chest cavity and I fix the top end of all of them. I do an experiment by attaching a one kilogram weight to each of them. Suppose the first lung stretches 30 centimeters, the second 20 centimeters, and the third only 10 centimeters. Now, this raises a question. If we put one kilogram to each of them, why does it happen that one has stretched 30 centimeters, second 20 centimeters, and third 10 centimeters? This is actually because of different tissue compliance. If we consider the second lung, which has been stretched 20 centimeters, as a normal compliant lung, we will expect that the first lung is more compliant and the third lung is less compliant when we compare to the other two lungs. There are a lot of lung diseases that cause these kinds of changes. So compliance is a measure of lung distensibility. The first lung has been stretched 30 centimeters in the same weight. This means it is easier to distend the first lung compared to the others. The third lung is less compliant, in other words, it is stiffer than the other lungs. This is the why it has been stretched 10 centimeters in the same weight. Again, compliance is a lung distensibility. Elastins. Elastins is inverse to compliance. It is a tendency of the lung to recoil inward. Suppose I remove the weights from all the lungs and they start collapsing. Suppose the first lung completely collapses in 30 seconds, the second lung in 20 seconds, and the third lung in 10 seconds. If we consider the second lung which has completely collapsed in 20 seconds as the normal elasticity of the lung, we will expect that the third lung is more elastic than the second because it collapses faster. The faster it recoils, the more elastic it is. In other words, the recoil force trying to collapse the lung is largest in a third lung. The first lung is less elastic, meaning recoil force is less than in other lungs. Thus, it collapses slower than others do. Suppose you are chewing a gum. Suddenly you decide to fix one end of the gum between your teeth and other end you are stretching. Do you think the gum is elastic? Actually no, because when you stretch it, it never comes back, right? If it was come back like a rubber band, then we will say that it is elastic. Compliance is inversely related to elasticity. Because the gum is easily stretched, we say that it is compliant, it has a great compliance, but it is not elastic. Please do not confuse these two terms. To sum it up, compliance is inversely related to elastic recoil. Increased elastic recoil of the lung as a result of disease decreases lung compliance, whereas decreasing recoil increases compliance. So how do we determine lung compliance in vivo? Let's talk about this. So the lung compliance is the change in lung volume divided by the change in surrounding pressure. Please keep in your mind this equation. Suppose the lung is at FRC, meaning before inspiration begins. At FRC, the intrapleural pressure is negative 5 cm water. In order to overcome the recoil force and expand the lungs so air can flow in, you have to change the intrapleural pressure. You have to make it even more negative. 
Negative intrapleural pressure is that force which expands the lung as that weight in vitro we just talked about. This compliance is an index of the effort required to expand the lungs to overcome recoil which tries to collapse the lung. First, let's talk about compliance of the lung in inspiration. When you start breathing, first the diaphragm contracts, pulling the lungs downwards. The intrapleural pressure decreases from negative 5 to negative 8 cm water. As a consequence, the lungs expand. The lung expansion forms volume to receive 600 ml of air. And only then 600 ml of air flows to the lungs. Let's calculate what is compliance of this lung using our equation. Again, the lung compliance is the change in lung volume divided by the change in surrounding pressure, which in this case is intrapleural pressure. The change in pressure is 3 cm water because 8 minus 5 equals 3. The change in lung volume is 600 ml. If we divide 600 ml by 3 cm water, we get 200 ml per cm water. What does this mean? This simply means that for every 1 cm water decreasing the pleural pressure, 200 ml of air flows into the respiratory system. You have to change the intrapleural pressure from negative 5 to negative 8 cm water meaning 3 units in order to 600 ml air flows to the lungs. This is compliance of normal lung in inspiration. It is very important to note that for any given fall in intrapleural pressure, larger alveoli expand less than small alveoli. So, let's calculate what compliance is in expiration. During expiration, the diaphragm relaxes. The intrapleural pressure increases from negative 8 to negative 5 cm water to its original level. 600 ml of air leaves the lungs because of lung compression. Therefore, 600 ml is change in volume. The pressure change is 3 cm water. 600 ml divided by 3 again is 200 ml per cm water. Again, please note this is compliance in expiration. To sum it up, the preceding calculations simply mean that for every 1 cm water pleural pressure changes, 200 ml of air flows in or out of the respiratory system. If intrapleural pressure is decreased from negative 5 to negative 6, inspired tidal volume will be 200 ml. If intrapleural pressure is increased from 7 from negative 7 to negative 5, the expired tidal volume will be 400 ml. Again, for every one pleural pressure changes, 200 ml of air comes or leaves the lung. That was about normal compliance of the lung in inspiration and expiration. Now let's see how compliance increases. Of course, this happens as a result of lung diseases. In this patient, during inspiration, when the diaphragm contracts and pulls the lungs downwards, the pleural pressure decreases from negative 5 to negative 8 cm water, the lung expands and suppose forms 1200 ml volume to receive air. Then 1,200 ml of air flows to the lungs. Let's calculate. Let's determine the lung compliance in this patient. Again, we will use our formula which says the lung compliance is equal to the change in lung volume divided by the change in pleural pressure. Lung volume changes up to 1,200 ml and change in pressure is 3 cm water. 1,200 ml divided by 3 cm water equals 400 ml per cm water. This means now for every 1 cm water pleural pressure changes, 400 ml of air is flowing to the lung, but the normal flow is 200 ml per cm water pleural pressure changes. 
What does this tell us? This tells us that the compliance of this lung is increased. In a little changing of intrapleural pressure, more volume of air flows to the lungs when compared with the normal lungs. In clinical practice, this happens in case of emphysema. Emphysema often caused by smoking results in destruction of the elastic tissue, alveolar septum, and capillaries. This reduces the elastic recoil, thus increasing compliance. The lung will be easily stretched. This is the reason why the patient with any type of obstructive pulmonary diseases has no problem with inspiration, rather they have trouble with expiration. Now, let's see how compliance decreases. In this patient, during inspiration, when the diaphragm contracts, the intrapleural pressure decreases from negative 5 to negative 8, the lung expands and suppose forms 300 ml volume to receive air. Then 300 ml of air flows to the lung. Let's determine the lung compliance in this patient. Again, we will use our formula which says the lung compliance is equal to the change in lung volume divided by the change in pleural pressure. Lung volume changes down to 300 ml and change in pressure is 3 cm water. 300 divided by 3 equals 100 ml per cm water. This means now for every 1 cm water pleural pressure changes. 100 ml of air is flowing to the lung, but the normal flow is 200 ml per cm water pleural pressure changes. What does this tell us? This tells us that the compliance of this lung is decreased. In order to receive 600 ml of tidal volume, the intrapleural pressure should change from negative 5 down to negative 11 compared with normal when it changes only 3 units from negative 5 to negative 8. In clinical practice, this happens in case of fibrosis. Fibrosis is increased collagen fiber deposition in lung, which increases the tissue component of elastic recoil. Increased recoil means it is the stiff lung and is difficult to stretch it. Thus, compliance decreases. You know that compliance is an index of the effort required to expand the lungs to overcome recoil. This is the reason why the patients with fibrosis experience difficult mainly with inspiration, not expiration because the lung is difficult to stretch but easy to deflate. Now let's see to the lung compliance curve and learn how to deal with them because it is really important for the exam. In y-axis we have lung volume and in x-axis we have the intrapleural pressure. When you decrease the intrapleural pressure, you increase the lung volume. If I draw the normal lung compliance curve, it would look something like this. Let's calculate the compliance of the lung from this curve. If you decrease the pleural pressure from negative 5 to negative 8, the lung expands and 600 ml air flows to the lung. The volume which enters the lung will increase from FRC, which is 1500 ml, up to 2000 ml in a curve from point A to point B. Please note, the residual volume is not shown here. Putting these values to our formula, again we get 200 ml per cm water. In quiet inspiration, the normal lung compliance is from point A to point B. It is the steepest part of the curve, as you see. It is very important to note that the steeper the line, the more compliant the lungs. It is very important to note that when a person breathes in with maximal effort, the lung completely inflates and we close total lung capacity. When we close the total lung capacity, the lung becomes steeper. 
As a consequence, it is difficult to further stretch it. Thus, the lung compliance decreases at total lung capacity. Returning to our curve, you should note that the flatter part of the curve is from point C to point D. This means the lung is becoming stiffer. Compliance reduces because you are closing to total lung capacity. It is very important to know that in a sigmoid graph of compliance, as you move to the left, you are going to see increasing compliance. And as you move to the right, you are going to see decreasing compliance. Moving the curve to the left increases the slope. Moving to the right decreases the slope. The slope is equal to compliance. The greater the slope, meaning the steeper the line, the more compliant the lung. The flatter the line, the less compliant the lung. Increased compliance equals larger volume floor per change in pleural pressure. Decreased compliance equals smaller volume flows per change in pleural pressure. The red curve is steeper than others are. This means it is more compliant. The main disease that leads to increasing compliance of the lung is emphysema. In addition, increased lung compliance also occurs with aging and with a saline-filled lung. The blue curve is flatter than others are. The flatter the line, the less compliant the lung. The main disease that leads to decreasing compliance of the lung is fibrosis and interstitial edema whose curve looks like this. It is steeper.